journal entry 387. People don't understand that our lives in the grand scheme and in, in the whole timeline of the universe, huh, our lives are nothing. So why not make that nothing something? Matthew's been here, you know, practically all his life. What, 15, 15 years before the accident? I miss coming into the house in the afternoons. I miss coming into the house in the afternoons from a stressful day at work. And you can hear the piano. And I just sit there, like I have the little stool at the end of the hallway, and just sit there and listen to him playing music. It's almost like hearing music every day in your life, and then one day you come in and there's no music. On the evening of January 4th, 2019, Matthew Russian did not come home. That night, he left his house a little after 7 p.m. My mom and I were sitting on the couch watching a movie, and it was pouring rain. I mean, you can literally hear the rain on the windows, on the roof. Matthew left home. He wanted to go to Panera to pick up some pastries and see his girlfriend. Russian was making a left into the Panera shopping center when his truck collided with another vehicle. I honestly believe that after that fender bender and in the Panera parking lot, he went into sort of a, a shutdown, meltdown mode. I'm being honest, it, it, was, it, was, it was a lot. Okay, if you were in my head in an instant, you would have been like, wow, that's a lot. You have a lot? A bit, yeah. To understand what happened that night, you need to know more about Matthew Russian. He has ADHD, generalized anxiety disorder, and a traumatic brain injury from a previous car accident in 2017. But the condition that we are going to focus on is his Asperger's syndrome, now considered autism spectrum disorder. He was diagnosed in sixth grade. We have a stereotype of what autism looks like. And it's either the little kid rocking it with a helmet on, or it's the kind of nerdy kid who talks about train timetables all the time. And in fact, many people on the spectrum are what people would consider to be normal looking, but they have issues that very much put them on the spectrum. For example, meltdowns. Meltdowns manifest in different ways for different autistic people, but they are a common response to a high-stress event. That's why I was doing my breathing exercises, because I, I couldn't, couldn't get myself to breathe, breathe steadily and relax and think things through, so I need to breathe. A meltdown simply is being completely overwhelmed. So he was having a meltdown to the degree that he was not thinking rationally, he was extremely upset, he was panicking, but he was trying desperately to have some kind of control at the same time. Russian fled the scene of the fender bender, sped through the shopping center and out onto First Colonial Road. Then he changed his mind. You're going up the road, passing cars like they're standing still essentially. Like you're going twice as fast as they are. Mm -hmm. What was the sudden decision to make that U-turn? Uh, like I said, I was doing my breathing exercises and it, it just hit me, okay, we need to go back. And that was why I made the U-turn. Russian made a U-turn, drove a tenth of a mile, and crossed through the median break into oncoming traffic. Around 7.42 p.m., Russian's truck crashed into George and Dana Cusick's SUV, severely injuring them both. A third car, driven by Thor Wentz, was also involved. Immediately following the crash, 
Russian was restrained by two different bystanders. Wentz approached Russian and began yelling at him. I said something to him, something to the effect of, what the F are you doing? You could have killed somebody. He was agitated. I would describe him as maybe a little in hysterics. When I said what I said to him, his comeback to all of us standing there was something to the effect of, I wish I were dead. I should be dead. I want to die can be a statement of just pure emotional overload. It's not a logical statement of a plan. When I said I want, I want to die, I didn't, I didn't word that correctly. I didn't want to actually die. When, when that guy came up to me and confronted me like that, when I was in the state that I was in, um, what I said to him was, it was just, it, I didn't mean it, is what, what was what I'm saying. Echolalia is something where autistic people repeat what they hear. And so someone says uh, a phrase, the person who's on the spectrum might repeat that phrase. And that can happen when someone is completely agitated. There are 17 police cars with their flashers going. There are 17 policemen. People are yelling. You can imagine what this is like for somebody like Matthew. It is completely overwhelming. I, I, I didn't know what else to say because, like I said, I didn't want to make the situation worse by cussing back at him. I didn't, I, I like, I, I really don't know how else to explain it. But police concluded the crash had been intentional. And later, the Commonwealth of Virginia would emphasize what Russians said at the scene. We got the call saying that he was, like, in police custody. Miss Russian, um, Matthew's been in an accident. Actually, several. And I said, several? My husband left, went down there. He calls me, he says, I can't see Matthew. They won't let me see him. He's sitting in the back of one of the, the vehicles. And I just, I, I couldn't grasp what was going on. Our parents had a talk with us about how to interact with police officers if we were ever stopped. I wondered, am I gonna be the next person? Am I going to be the next hashtag? I had to kind of reiterate to him, he is a black young man coupled with being ADHD and autistic. Those are all the things that work against you when you get pulled over by a police officer. They have cameras and they have witnesses. So, of course, they're going to want to listen to them rather than one. 20-year-old black male, and she doesn't know any better. This was a, an accident that occurred on a rainy night, and it seems that very, very little investigation was done before Matthew was almost instantly uh, treated as a, as a criminal rather than somebody who had been involved in an accident. Matthew's autism, Matthew's neurological state, Matthew's uh, mental state, were never taken into account, were never evaluated, despite the fact that from the beginning to the end, there was the presumption that Matthew was suicidal. Russian was offered medical help at the scene and refused. In a statement to the Washington Post, Virginia Beach police said, Matthew Russian was an adult at the time of the accident, and there was no indication that he was in mental crisis. We cannot force someone who is conscious, alert, and lucid to accept medical help. If somebody is agitated and disoriented and slurring their speech, to ask them to make an evaluation of their condition and decide whether or not they are medically okay seems to me to be pretty ridiculous. Russian was interrogated on the scene for over three hours. He was then taken to police headquarters and interrogated again. In order to waive your Fifth Amendment privilege and give an interview, that waiver needs to be knowing and intelligent. And so somebody who is not capable of making that decision, it really calls into question the legal integrity of that interview. So, I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. You're, you're going to be charged tonight. You're going to have to go to jail tonight. Okay. Okay.
Russian was charged with second degree attempted murder. George Cusick, the driver of the SUV, was severely injured. He lives in a long-term care facility, has trouble feeding himself, speaking, or remembering family. After the crash, he had multiple surgeries. His arm was so obliterated, they put what they call a, um, a fixator on his arm. It's like a brace of some sort to connect his upper arm with his lower arm. He started to come back. He had a grand mal seizure. I ask him questions. George, are you okay? I don't always get an answer. George, are you in your chair every day? I don't, I don't get an answer. He doesn't remember from one day to the next. So I was broken. He was destroyed. What about the impacts of, of what he, like happened, especially to the other families? Russian's case never went to trial. On the advice of his lawyer at the time, Melinda Golubki, he pled guilty to two lesser counts of malicious wounding and one count of hit and run. There are questions about whether he understood what the plea deal really meant. Uh, I was confident in uh, uh, Melinda Golubki's words that if I sign that plea deal, I would get much less time or I could go home. And I took that around with him she wasn't stating otherwise. Mm -hmm. So and I never I've never been in that situation before, so of course I'm gonna latch on to any bit of hope I can and wonder what what that hope. But then it turns out that I I just signed away my on my point. Was he processing what was actually being said? Did he understand what this thing said? Did he understand the implications of it? I doubt it. You don't hear of anyone who was helping him process this, helping him understand the implications. Was he doing this because people were telling him it was the right thing to do? And as someone on the spectrum, he believed that people would have his best interests at heart and would tell him to do the right thing? Your understanding of the plea deal was that you were not signing guilt. You were signing to come home because you told me you weren't guilty of those charges. Right. So. I, I even said, said that in my, uh, in my closing statement. Before, right before he sentenced me. What, what did you say? I said it was an accident. In November of 2019, a judge sentenced Russian to 50 years in prison with 40 years suspended. He's currently serving a 10-year sentence. According to a statement from the Office of the Attorney General, the investigation and prosecution of Matthew Russian were thorough, professional, and just. A number of people became victims of Russian's intentional malicious conduct on January 4, 2019. If he is released, the public at large is at risk of becoming Russian's next victim. Since Russian's sentencing, his case has been championed by the autistic community and Black Lives Matter. Miss Russian, I feel sorry for your son, Matthew. It just made me feel like, damn, I'm not protected by the system either because I'm Black. I also have a disability, so I'm not protected. When authority figures see black people with disabilities. They immediately see the word aggression in the back of their minds. I speak well, I write well, I'm very articulate, but if someone had grabbed me, I don't, you know, I don't think I would have had the capacity for, uh, for rational thought. 
it's tiring to see the exact same problems play out again and again and then realize that, you know, no real radical change is made. Effective July 1 of this year, there was a change in Virginia law. Courts can withhold or avoid convicting somebody of a felony if the defense can show that the person's autism was a factor in the incident. Lorraine Rushen, hi, Chief Zuccaro, nice to see you. Sorry I have to see you under these circumstances. I understand. Perhaps we can talk at another time that would be more appropriate to a conversation. This is not the appropriate time for a conversation. Okay? Even though the new law doesn't directly apply to Matthew's case because Matthew was charged before the law went into effect, it's directly relevant because it shows essentially that the Virginia legislature has codified precisely what we're saying would have been the fair and just thing to do in Matthew's case. We have sent in a packet requesting an absolute pardon from the governor of Virginia, Ralph Northam. And we're just hoping the governor um, can make a decision here real fast. Never in a million years would I have imagined that something like this would have happened to my brother. I hope that Matthew is released. I hope that he is able to come home and start to rebuild his life, no matter what that looks like. And I hope change occurs. There needs to be some sort of buffer between police officers and those with mental health issues. Because I've read so much of his poetry and his writing and his music, I can sit here and listen to the waves and just visualize how he's composing his music. I can't wait for the day he gets to come back here. I see the world differently. I see people differently. I see situations differently. Socially, I'm, I'm, I'm aberration. But I don't mind. I actually, I actually prefer being different. What makes that the accent of Russian, that's the accent of Russian. And one of those things is that he has aspirations. And I love that.